Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a deep dive into tuning your AM32 ESC. So we're going to be looking at how to maximize the performance of the ESC to enable your motor to accelerate and decelerate as fast as possible, giving you the best flight performance, keeping your quad as stable as possible in the air for super smooth footage. And we're also going to be looking at how to minimize the risk that the ESC loses track of the motor as it's spinning and you get a desync and the quad falls out of the sky. So we're also gonna be talking about that. It's a lot to cover in one video. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. If you're looking to get the best possible experience out of your drone, then I have to let you know about my configuration and tuning guides. They're available over on my Patreon. I've got PDF guides for Betaflight 4.5, BL Heli 32, and now AM32. They're really detailed and they take you step by step through every setting and how to tune it to get your drone flying as good as it possibly can. And because they're PDF guides, they're easy for a quick reference. You can take them with you on your phone in the field. And also I keep them more up to date than the videos because it's, it's much easier to update them. So if you're looking for the latest and greatest information all backed up by my scientific testing, then please check out the links in the video description and head on over to my Patreon. And I really appreciate any support that you can give. Before we go through the results, I just want to give you a quick overview of the equipment that I use to collect all of this test data, starting with the motors and props. So for the 3-inch testing, we're using this Zing 2 1404 3800 kV, driving a 3-inch HQ-T 3x3x3 prop. For the 5-inch testing, we're using this AOS Supernova 2207 1980 kV. This is the most powerful and fastest accelerating 6S 5-inch motor that I've ever tested, so it's going to really put this ESC through its paces, and it's driving the HQ 5x4.5x3 V1S prop, which is my standard test prop for 5-inch motors. For the 7-inch motor, we have the AOS Supernova 2807 1400 kV. This is the best performing 7 inch motor in its weight category and again it's really able to put the ESC through its paces with a lot of power and torque and it's driving this HQ 7x3.5x3 V1S test prop. The ESC that I'm going to be using is the Skystars KM55 amp. It's running AM32 version 2.12 and it's you can see this is the ESC here I've just got a spare. That's going to be connected to this F7 flight controller, which is going to be doing the logging over bi-directional D-shot for all of the acceleration and deceleration tests. All of the efficiency and thrust tests you're going to see are going to be logged by this Taito Robotics 1585 thrust test stand. To make sure that all of the tests are fair and consistent, we're going to be powering these motors from a big battery. The 7-inch and 5-inch motors are going to be powered from a 5200 milliamp power 6S pack kept topped up to 24 volts by a power supply. And the 3-inch class motor is going to be run off this 5200 milliamp power 4S pack kept topped up to 16 volts by the power supply. And that just makes sure that all of the accelerations that we're going to be doing are absolutely consistent. Using this test setup, I did two different types of test. The first test was a throttle ramp from 0 to 100% throttle over 10 seconds. And during that ramp, I'm looking at things like the shape of the thrust curve, the efficiency of the motor, ESC and prop combination, so the whole powertrain. And I'm also looking at the maximum thrust and power that the motor is able to produce. The second test is a throttle step where I'm stepping the motor between 10 and 50% throttle and back again. And in that test, I'm looking at how fast the ESC can accelerate and decelerate the motor from that 10 to 50% throttle setting. And that's really important for keeping the quad nice and stable in the air. So those are the two types of tests that we're gonna be looking at in these results. We're gonna start by looking at the three inch 3,800 kV motor. And we're gonna start by looking at timing. Timing is a really interesting setting because what it controls is when the ESC fires the coil relative to when the magnet passes opposite the end of the coil. If we have a timing of zero degrees, that means that the coil is fired exactly when the magnet is directly opposite the end of the coil. If we have some positive timing, some timing advance as it's called, that means that we're firing the coil slightly before the magnet passes directly opposite the end of the coil. And the reason we want some timing advance is because it takes a little bit of time for the field to build up in the coil to reach a, a, a strength because the coil has some inductance. And the more inductance the coil has, the longer it's going to take for that field to build up. When we have a very low timing, we tend to get better performance, but 
at the risk of desyncs because if we're not firing the coil till the magnet is directly opposite it, um, then sometimes we can lose control of the rotor and that can cause a desync. However, if we're firing the coil well before the magnet has passed the end of the coil, then what that means is that for some time we're actually pushing against the motor. So we're actually slowing the motor down initially before the magnet passes the end of the coil and then we're pushing to accelerate the motor. So firing the coil too early reduces motor performance and also potentially can reduce a little bit of motor efficiency as well. What we see with our three inch motor is that a slightly faster response is achieved with lower timing on AM32. So we have motor RPM on the Y axis and time in milliseconds on the X axis. So the motor that accelerates the most quickly or the setting that accelerates the most quickly is giving us the best response. And we can see that we get an improvement in response when we move from 22 and a half to 15 degrees of timing. Another slightly smaller improvement when we move from 15 to seven and a half, and then a very small negligible improvement when we move from seven and a half to zero degrees of timing. It's a similar story with deceleration. Again, we've got motor RPM on the Y axis and time on the X axis. We can see that we get a small improvement in deceleration responsiveness when we move from 22 and a half to 15 degrees of timing, but then almost no improvement decreasing timing below 15 degrees. We get maybe a very small amount of improvement to seven and a half, and then absolutely no improvement from seven and a half to zero degrees of timing. Looking now at the relationship between thrust and timing, we can see that the throttle curve is slightly different for different timings. We've got thrust here on the y-axis versus throttle percent on the x-axis, and that the higher timings have a slightly higher throttle curve than the lower timings, but then everything sort of evens out by the time you get up to full throttle. I don't think this would be noticeable on the sticks, but we can detect something on the thrust test stand. Looking at efficiency versus timing now, we've still got thrust on the y-axis, but now we have electrical power on the x-axis. And what we can see is that at high throttles, it does look like efficiency might be very slightly better at seven and a half degrees of timing, but the difference is very marginal and it disappears at lower throttle settings where you're more likely to be cruising. So I don't think we can make a firm recommendation on timing based on efficiency. All the timing settings perform very, very similarly in terms of efficiency. So my three inch timing recommendation is gonna be as a safe setting, 15 degrees. That's gonna give you good performance and it's gonna be very resilient against desyncs. And I would recommend that for any three inch quad. If you're a racing pilot and you're looking for the maximum possible performance, then you could consider ticking it down one more notch and going to seven and a half degrees. And that is gonna give you a little bit more performance, but you will need to test it out to make sure that you're not getting desyncs. But if you don't get desyncs at seven and a half degrees, then you are gonna be getting better performance. Now let's talk about PWM frequency. This is how fast the FETs are switched on and off to control the throttle setting of the motor. If you're at full throttle, 100%, then the FETs won't be switching at all, so PWM frequency doesn't matter in that case. But when you're at less than full throttle, the battery voltage is switched on and off the FETs very, very fast to give you a throttle value less than 100% and the frequency of this switching is the PWM frequency, and it has some quite interesting effects on motor performance, as we're gonna see. Let's start by looking at motor acceleration versus PWM frequency. And what we have is we have motor RPM on the y-axis versus time on the x-axis. And you can see that all of our PWM frequencies here are ranges. And that's because AM32 has variable PWM by default. What that means is that the frequency of the PWM changes with the motor RPM. And the reason they do this is to keep the PWM frequency away from the commutation frequency, which is to do with the rotation frequency of the motor. If you have PWM frequency matching up with commutation frequency, you can get notchy throttle where the uh, motor will wanna stay at a certain throttle position, or it'll wanna stay at a certain RPM at a certain throttle. And that gives a notchy throttle feel, and sometimes that's not desirable. Moving the PWM frequency so that they never line up keeps the throttle response really nice and smooth. So we always have a range and the top number, the highest PWM that the motor is ever gonna to go to is always twice the lower number. So we've got 16 to 32, 24 to 48, 36 to 72, 48 to 96. What we can see is that increasing from 16 to 24 kilohertz PWM has an improvement in terms of the acceleration of the motor. 
and then we see another improvement moving from 24 to 36 and then a much smaller improvement moving from 36 to 48k. So you can see we get diminishing returns as we continue to increase PWM frequency. If we look now at the deceleration of the motor, we see the precise opposite of that. So we see an improvement in the deceleration of the motor when we decrease the PWM frequency. So we're going from 48 to 36, we get an improvement, and then we get a very small improvement from 36 to 24, and another very small improvement from 24 to 16. So again, diminishing returns. Once we get below about 36K at the low end, uh, we don't see much improvement beyond that. Looking at thrust versus PWM, the thrust curves are nearly identical regardless of the PWM frequency, so we're not going to be making a decision based on that. And the efficiency curves are also nearly identical versus PWM frequency, apart from maybe very low PWM frequencies like 16 to 32K, at low throttle they are definitely less efficient. But we weren't going to pick those super low PWM frequencies anyway because the acceleration is quite slow. This gives us a very clear recommendation for 3-inch motors in terms of PWM frequency. I would say 36 to 72 kilohertz gives the best balance of acceleration and deceleration, the best efficiency, so that's going to be the one that you're going to want to pick for that smaller 3-inch size motor. The final setting we're going to look at is called motor KV. And what this setting actually does is it controls the amount of throttle the ESC will apply to the motor at low RPMs. The lower the KV setting, the more throttle uh, the AM32 ESC will apply to the motor at low RPMs to cause it to accelerate. And so this setting is somewhat similar to ramp up power in BL Heli 32, apart from a lower motor KV setting corresponds to a higher ramp up power. So this is something that you need to look at and tune quite carefully because just reducing the motor KV and dumping more current into the motor to try and get it to accelerate faster works up to a point, but at some point you saturate the motor and then all that extra current just goes into heat and that can cause the motor to get very hot and you don't get any more performance, you just lose efficiency. So now let's take a look at motor KV. Looking at acceleration versus motor KV, we can see we've got motor RPM on the y-axis versus time on the x-axis. And if you set the motor KV setting really high to like 10,000 KV for a 3,800 KV motor, you can see that the motor accelerates very slowly and actually it doesn't even reach its full RPM value. So it doesn't even get up to the 19,000 RPM which it should reach. It only gets to about 15, 16,000. If you then decrease the setting to 8,000, 6,000, 4,000, so you're bringing the motor KV setting down towards the true value, the acceleration improves massively. And that's because the ESC is able to apply more throttle at those lower RPMs and accelerate the motor more quickly. However, you don't see much benefit decreasing the motor KV setting below the true value of the motor KV. You can see that going from 4,000 to 3,000 gives us very, very little benefit, if any at all. And below 3,000, there is no benefit to decreasing the motor KV further. So there's no point pushing the motor KV down below the true value of the motor KV because you're just going to dump more current into the motor when it's already saturated. It's not going to accelerate any faster and all that extra current is just going to be wasted as heat. So you don't want to do that. But also you do want to make sure that the motor KV value is correctly set in the AM32 firmware so that you're getting the best acceleration and you're avoiding heating up the motor too much. Looking at deceleration, we can see that motor KV has no effect on motor deceleration at all. If you set the KV setting way, way too high, uh, the motor won't accelerate up to the correct RPM because it won't get enough throttle. And that obviously affects the deceleration curve as well, but you can ignore that. All of the other settings have exactly the same deceleration curve. They sit on top of each other. There's no difference. So that setting just doesn't matter for deceleration. That makes the three inch motor KV recommendation really, really simple. Just set it correctly according to the stated motor KV. And if you can't set the number exactly because you've not got a setting for exactly 3,800, always err on the lower side. So pick 3,780 rather than 3,820. That'll make sure that you're always slightly below the stated motor KV rather than slightly above. And that's gonna make sure that you're always getting the best possible performance. 
Now that we've gone through the results for the three inch motor in detail, I'm gonna give you the results and my recommendations for the five inch and seven inch motors by similarity. So we're not gonna go through every chart. I'm gonna pick out the ones that are different and then I'm gonna give you my recommendations just to be respectful of your time. If you would like to look at all of the detailed charts for every test, every setting on the five and seven inch motors as well, then that's all available in the PDF tuning guide on my Patreon. And I'd really appreciate it if you'd sign up and go and check that out. And that will give you all the raw, de raw data that underlies these recommendations. First of all, I just wanted to show you what a desync looks like in my test data. So here we're looking at the five inch acceleration test with different timings. And on the zero degree timing setting, we consistently got a desync with the rapid acceleration test. So you can see that the acceleration performance improves, reducing from 22 and a half to 15 degrees of timing, seven and a half, much the same. And then zero degrees, you get this very clear desync where uh, the ESC is no longer able to accelerate the motor and it just loses control. So this is the risk with running zero degrees of timing and that's why I would never recommend that anyone run timings that low. Um, here we see that there's actually no benefit to decreasing timing beyond 15 degrees. The other graph that I wanted to show you is the really extreme effect that having a motor KV setting that's way too high for the motor can have. So here we've got the seven inch motor, 1400 KV nominal, and we have a setting of 10,000 and 8,000 kV that just can't even accelerate the motor at all. It only gets it up to about 6,000 RPM. As we decrease the motor kV setting, performance improves and we get accelerations that get up closer to the correct value, which is about 14,000 RPM. Once we're down at 4,000 kV, so twice, uh, three times the stated value, then we're getting something that's reasonable. And as we decrease further, 2,000 and 1,500 kV, again, we see the acceleration um, stop improving. So that's when we're reaching the correct level of acceleration, the maximum acceleration that the motor is capable of. This is really important, particularly if you're running larger eight or 10 inch quads and you have very low motor KVs, 900 KV, 800 KV, maybe even 400 KV. You need to go into the AM32 settings and you need to adjust your motor KV correctly for that motor. Otherwise it may not accelerate properly or it may not accelerate as fast as it's able to. The default setting I think is around 2000 KV on AM32. So that's gonna work if you're running a five inch or a six inch or a seven inch quad. And it's fine, although you probably should increase it for smaller quads like three inch. But if you're running an eight or 10 inch quad that's got less than a thousand KV, motors, you're definitely going to need to go into that setting and adjust it down to make sure that the acceleration is going to be correct. With those differences called out, let's dive into the recommendations, starting with timing. And the recommendations for timing are the same as for three inch motors. So 15 degrees, I recommend as safe for all quads, and it's going to give you slightly better performance in general than 22 and a half degrees. If you want to try and push for even more performance, then you might get a little bit more benefit out of 7.5 degrees, but it is gonna increase the risk of desyncs, and I would never ever use zero degree timing with these larger motors because the risk of desyncs is just way too high. So 15 degrees is safe, seven and a half degrees you can try, um, but does increase the risk of desyncs a bit, don't use zero. For my PWM recommendation, I would say that for these larger motors, 24 to 48 kilohertz gave the best balance of acceleration and deceleration in my testing. And the graphs look almost identical to the three inch plots, but there's just a slightly different trade-off between the different frequencies for these larger motors that gives 24 to 48 K a little bit of an advantage. So that's the one that I would recommend. And um, definitely use the variable PWM just to avoid any risk of that notchy throttle. In terms of motor KV settings, it's exactly the same recommendation as for the three inch motor, which is to set it correctly according to the stated motor KV and to always err on slightly lower. So if you can't match the value exactly, just take the setting one tick lower rather than one tick higher. And that will just guarantee that you're always getting the best performance. 
Hopefully these settings are going to help you get the maximum possible performance out of your AM32 ESC. I am going to be doing some further testing with smaller motors. So we're going to be looking at some tiny whoop motors with ESCs running BlueJay firmware. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, all of that good stuff so that you can see that tuning video as soon as it comes out. And of course, I'm going to be creating a whole tuning guide for BlueJay firmware along with that as well, focusing on tiny whoops. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.